In this video I will show to you how you can read data from Excel files and write it to Lakehouse tables using Maxed Fabric notebooks. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering and today we are covering reading Excel files with notebooks. Excel is a great tool for calculations and analytical purposes and business people tend to love it. But for data engineers its file format can be very challenging since reading it with any other tool than Excel can get tricky. Usually it is good to save an Excel file as a CSV file and then offer it as an input for data engineering solution. However, sometimes this is not possible and a data engineer must read data from an actual Excel file. For this scenario there are many tools in Maxed Fabric like data pipelines and data flows, but in my opinion the best tool for this task is the notebook, due its versatility and flexibility that it offers, since it can handle even more complex Excel files. In the next tutorial I will show to you how to read two different Excel files with different levels of complexity and write the data in them to Lakehouse tables. Also both of these files and the notebook that I will be using can be found by clicking the link in the description. But now let's get started with the tutorial. Here I have an Excel file that we are going to read in to a Lakehouse table using a notebook. In this Excel file we have four columns. We have this date column and then we have three other columns that we are going to read in using a notebook. Here I have a notebook that we are going to use in this tutorial. And I have uploaded the Excel file that I just showed to you to this Lakehouse's file section and added that to this folder called Fabric DE Series 32. And in this folder, this file 1 is the Excel file that we are going to read in first. We are going to come back to this second file shortly after we have handled the first one, because this second one is going to be a bit more complex than this first one. For reading that Excel file, we are going to use this library called Pandas, which is a very popular Python library that is meant for this kind of a data manipulation and exploration. Personally, I don't like using Pandas that much, but for reading Excel files, it is a very convenient library to use use. And in this first cell I'm first importing pandas as pd and then I'm defining lakehouse path to this variable and if you're wondering how to get this lakehouse path that I have here you can just go to your lakehouse and click the folder and copy this abfs path here and this will provide you with this path that I have here. Then next we are using this read excel function from this pandas library. So I'm calling it pd.readexcel and then I'm providing the file path that I have there and then I'm also providing the file name. And after that we are going to print the data type of this data frame in order to see that this is actually a pandas data frame and not a spark data frame. And then I'm going to display data so that we can see did we manage to read the contents of that excel correctly. But yeah let's run this cell and let's see what happens. This should finish fairly fast since we are not doing anything complex here. And now it is running and there we have. So we first printed out the type of the data frame and as we can see here we have this pandas.core.frame.data frame. This means that this data frame is not a Spark data frame and we are going to convert this to a Spark data frame shortly. But as we can see here the data already looks correct. So we managed to read in that data just fine. In this second cell I have here we are pretty much doing the same thing that we did in that previous cell, but now we are expanding this example a bit and converting that pandas data frame to a spark data frame using this spark.create data frame that actually can convert pandas data frames to spark data frames. And then we are printing out the type of the spark data frame in order to see that now it's actually a spark data frame. And then we are displaying the data to see that did we manage to convert the data from pandas data frame to spark data frame or did it have any errors there. But yeah, let's run this cell and let's see what happens. This finishes very fast and as we can see we first had their pandas data frame and then we have a spark data frame but the data looks identical so the conversion from the pandas data frame to a spark data frame went fine. And that should be a very simple operation so I didn't expect anything really happen there for the data. 
Now in this third cell we are again reading that same file and then converting that to a Spark data frame. After we have converted that Pandas data frame to a Spark data frame, we are creating a schema to our lake house and to that schema we are then creating a table called file1 based on the Spark data frame. And then we are querying data out from that table to see that did we manage to write that Excel data correctly to our lake house table. And now let's run this and let's see what happens. I think this will take a little bit longer to run since we are writing data to the lake house. And now our cell has executed and we can see that everything went fine and we managed to query our lake house and get that data. And if we would check this schema here, we can see that we have this file one here, which is the table that we just created there using this code here. So now we have managed to read in Excel file and write that to a lake house table. But the Excel file we had there was very simple one and it was really a walk in the park to read it in and write it to a lake house table. Next, let's have a bit more complex example that you could run into when doing a real world data engineering scenario. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the tutorial. Here I have the second Excel file and as we can see now we have two sheets in this file and here we have this first sheet where we don't have really any data we just have this text nothing interesting here and then we have this data two sheet here and on this sheet we have some data but the data is formatted a little bit differently than we had there. We have there some text before the data and then we have few few empty rows and after the data we have one empty row and again some text there. And these texts here and the empty rows will actually confuse the Excel function so we are not able to read this in like we did previously. Let's try to read that file in like we did previously. So we have basically the same code that we used previously there but now I have changed the file name to be file2 that I also have in that lake house folder and now let's try to run this code and let's see what happens and we get an error message some value error here that we cannot infer schema from an empty data set and this was expected but we would need to actually specify some options for this read excel function and if we check out this page that i have open here we can see that we have plenty of options available for this function to use and we can define for example the sheet name and do we have a header or names of the columns etc that will then affect how does this reader will behave so we can for example skip some rows in the beginning or after the file and now we would need to use these parameters for our function to define what kind of excel we are reading so we are able to read it in correctly and here I have some code where I have specified some options. For example, I have specified now that the sheet name where I want to read the data is the data2. Then I'm saying that no, I don't have a header. Because if we check out the file here, I don't have a header here. And then we can check out some other options that we have here. Then I'm saying that skip rows 3. So we are skipping 3 rows from the beginning. So we are not reading in these 3 rows that we have here. Then I'm saying skip footer. So I'm saying that skip 2 rows after the data. Because if I wouldn't specify these two options here, the reader would think that our data begins from row 1 and ends where the data ends so here. But these are not the data here that we want to read. We just want this table from the middle. Then I'm also specifying these column names to our data. So I'm saying that the first column is date and the, the second column is call one and then call two and call three. And now let's try to run this code and let's see what happens. And it is running and we can see that now we managed to read in that file two contents successfully. And lastly, I would like to write the contents of that second file to a lake house table as well and then query that. So we can do that with this code here. So basically we have same code here and then we are writing that to that delta table. And this already ran successfully and we should see another table here. And there is the file to table. So we managed to read in that file as well and write it to a lake house table.
And now you should know the basics how to deal with Excel files in notebooks. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.